Sports. Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T Newverse TV. Now, it is an absolutely spectacular day here at Globe Live Park. Rangers and the Red Sox playing under crystal blue skies, very light breezes, and comfortable temperatures. Today, the wrap-up of this four-game series, your Rangers hosting the Boston Red Sox. And welcome in, everyone, along with Todd Greaves, Steve Busby. Glad you can join us for this Sunday matinee of Ranger baseball. It should be a dandy. Rangers look for their first home series win of the year, and they send their veteran left-hander, Wandy Rodriguez, out there, Tom. Well, you're right, Buzz. He's a veteran. He's 36 years old, but he's pitching like he has a lot of life left in his arm. I think he's pitched probably better than the Rangers could have hoped for when they signed him as a free agent after spring training. In the month of May, he's had five starts. His ERA is just a little bit over three. Fewer hits than innings pitched, an opponent's batting average of 193. I think, Buzz, if you look at him right now at age 36, there's not a lot of difference between what you see now and what he was when he was at his best yeah. with the Houston Astros. Well, I think you're right, Tom. As a matter of fact, in some areas, he's probably a little bit better. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that as the game gets on. Adding that uh, cut fastball has made his repertoire even better than it was a couple of years ago. So, Rangers happy with what they're getting out of Watney. They look for another one here today. Jonas Martin is trying to stay hot as the Rangers are, and they're trying to win a home series against the Red Sox. We're back on Fox Sports Southwest right after this. is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer. The Ford Memorial Day EcoBoost sales event is here. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. By AT&T U-verse TV. U-verse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. By Budweiser, reminding you to make a plan to make it home. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. 
know, a great day out here at Globe Live Park. Nice crowd filing in. They're going to see the finale of this four-game set, the Rangers and the Red Sox. Before we get things underway, let's check in with Emily Jones. Em? Well, Buzz, the Rangers will be sad to see the calendar turn from May to June. It has been quite the month and quite the turnaround for this team, especially the last couple of weeks. Winners of nine of their last 12. And Delano DeShield says it all starts in the clubhouse. Yeah, I think it all starts like in the locker room. Uh, the chemistry we have, um, the energy we've been having the past well, all month really, um, really uplifts the team and and it, and it shows when we go out there and play. You know, we all we all, we play for each other. Um, we pick each other up when um, something bad happens or whatever. We don't let it kind of um, fluctuate our emotions. And obviously that good chemistry easier to talk about when your team is winning. But I think it's been important to note that this team really did have good chemistry even in April when they were losing. Uh, guys like Prince Fielder, uh, Elvis Andrews really trying to keep things light in the clubhouse, keep everyone's uh, perspective positive. And I think uh, that started to catch on and obviously pay dividends further on down the road. And now we're seeing it uh, taken to a whole nother, another level in the chemistry department right now, guys. Yeah, good points, Amy. I'll get a few uh, the good results. That's what you're after. Well, Rangers uh, out on the field, and now uh, Tom's going to tell you about the Amica Boston Red Sox starting lineup. The Red Sox are going to lead off with Dustin Pedroia, their second baseman, followed by Mookie Betts, the center fielder. David Ortiz will bat third at DH, followed by Hanley Ramirez, the left fielder. Mike Napoli bats fifth and plays first base. The third baseman is Pablo Sandoval. Batting seventh, the shortstop, Xander Bogarts, followed by the catcher, Blake Swihart, and the right fielder, Rusne Castillo. And that Boston Red Sox lineup will be charged with facing Wandy Rodriguez, our progressive scouting report on the 36-year-old left-hander. Seven starts, two and two this year for the Rangers. A curveball command against this ball club, imperative. That's what he had going for him in Fenway Park when he pitched very, very well and got the win against the uh, Red Sox. Cut fastball is a good complimentary pitch for him to go along with that curveball, get the ball in on right-handers and make it stay in there. And Wandy, when he has command, especially at that off-speed pitch, he's going to ring up some strikeouts, and he's also going to have a lot of weak contact against him, and that's what he's after. And we'll take a look at the uh, Ranger defense brought to you by Break Check this afternoon. The outfield, the liner to Shields in left, Leonis Martin in center, Shin Su Chu is in right, Mitch Marlin at first, Anzer Alberto and Elvis Andrews up the middle, Adrian Beltre at third, and Carlos Corporan catching Wandy Rodriguez, and uh, Corporan and Rodriguez have teamed up for all eight starts now that uh, Wandy has had in a Ranger uniform. Former teammates down in Houston, and uh, they are all set to go here this afternoon. Well, the Red Sox come in having lost two straight to the Rangers. They are just three and seven in their last ten ball games. Dustin Pedroia in that leadoff spot where he has been very productive. This is the ninth consecutive game in that leadoff spot. And the first pitch of the afternoon is high for ball one. Pedroia, 296 overall average. And he goes after the next pitch and skies it to center field. That sends Leonis back a ways, but plenty of room out there for out number one. No, Pedroia the first out here today. Next will be Mookie Betts. Well, Wanda's coming off a good start in Boston. That was on the 21st, three starts ago. Rangers won that game 3-1, to one, and he almost pitched seven innings. Six and two-thirds, gave up one run through 113 pitches. Had a no decision against Cleveland in his last start. A little wild in that game. Five walks, but only gave up three runs. And I think the one thing you would say about him, Buzz, is he's pitched like a pro. Like yep. a veteran knows what he's doing out there. Sure has. You are right about that, Tom. And, you know, even the ball games where he has not, not had very good command, the, the five walk games, for example, he's still been able to hold the damage down. Yeah, he's figured out a way to get him out. Now, Mookie Betts, with a count of one ball and one strike, a 246 average for the Santa fielder. And that pitch a little bit low, two and one. Betts, five home runs, 25 RBI. And boy, you get a look at him, uh, especially like the last 12 ball games, a 320 average. Good looking young player. Plays a good solid center field. Looks like he's going to be the kind of guy that can hit at the top of the order, 
maybe all the way down to number three. He's a run producer. That you can pitch inside to him. It's three balls and two strikes. So Betts trying to get aboard with one out. David Ortiz, the designated hitter for the Red Sox, waits to be next. Payoff pitch, grounded up the middle. Elvis gets a glove on it, but all he's able to do is slow it down. On into center field, Betts with a one-out single. Oh, Wandy got another ground ball, but not quite where Elvis could handle it. And Wandy's given up one run exactly in four of his seven starts, and it seems like in his best starts, he's had exceptional command of his curveball, a pitch that he can throw down out of the strike zone if he wants to get the hitter to chase ahead in the count, drop it on the outside corner to a right-hand hitter when he wants to. It's really been, when he's been pitching well this season, a terrific pitch for him. And he's always had a curveball. That's nothing new about him. Base and big poppy. David Ortiz got back in the lineup uh, in last night's ball game. Missed a couple of games working on his stuff. Morgan has the ball. Tear him off him. Still retrieves in time to underhand for the out at first with Rodriguez covering. Betts on into second. He's there with two outs. Yeah, that, it, that took a tricky hop on Mitch, and you can kind of see it coming, and he anticipated it. Mitch has terrific hands at first base. I haven't seen anyone in the league better at digging throws in the dirt out than he is. This ball comes up on him a little bit, takes a big hop, but he never panics. He knows that it's Big Poppy running, and they get an out at first, even though they don't get the lead runner. Had he been able to pick that ball, which would have been tough based on the hop, might have had a chance to turn a double play with Ortiz running. So Betts in scoring position, and Hanley Ramirez will come up. Yeah, that's one of the things about holding a runner on. When you're the first baseman like that, you, you don't have a chance to get the hop you want necessarily. And that uh, was more of a, a long short hop for Mitch Moreland. Hanley Ramirez, a couple of home runs in the series. He's hitting 257 now. A dozen home runs. He has driven in 26. A lot of experience against Wandy Rodriguez. 10 for 27 is Ramirez. There's that big slow hook that drops in to even the count. Out of those 10 hits that Ramirez has, one of them went for a home run. And three of the four hits in this series have gone for extra bases. Mookie Betts, a speed runner, a speedster running out there at second base. Base hit to left field. Betts around third. The Shields will not make the throw to the plate. It'll go into second. And the Red Sox, on the strength of Hanley Ramirez, RBI base hit, take a 1 0 lead. Good choice by Delino. Uh, you have to know the runner, you have to know your arm, and you have to make a sensible play. And he was getting ready to launch it toward home plate, but didn't want Ramirez to take second base on the throw without much chance of getting Betts, who has excellent speed at home plate anyway. He was pretty deep when he fielded this ball and made the wise choice by throwing it into second base. Well, a couple of hits and a run for the Sox. Now Mike Napoli takes strike one. Napoli, a 213 average. Eight home runs, 22 driven in. Garnered Player of the Week honors for last week in the American League. Slowed down a little bit, but not much. He had uh, over 500 for the week past. Four home runs in his last nine ball games. There's that slow hook coming through the back door for a strike. Wandy. Pitched in the major leagues for the last 10 years. And yeah, Napoli skies one to right. That sends Chu back. Still going back, but has room as he steps onto the warning track. And that'll do it. Red Sox get two hits, and they score a run in the first. After a half inning of play, it's the Red Sox one. The Rangers coming up.
And Tom will tell you about the Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers lineup. Now coming off a nice game last night, the Lionel DeShields Shields again leads off. He'll play left field. Shin Su Chu is the right fielder. Prince Fielder bats third. Adrian Beltre bats fourth at third base. Mitch Moreland will bat fifth at first base. The shortstop batting sixth is Elvis Andrus. Leonis Martin bats seventh. Carlos Corporan gets the start, bats eighth at catcher. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Hanser Alberto. And that Ranger lineup, uh, guided by Jeff Bannister, will face Joe Kelly, 25-year-old right-hander. That is his uh, shortest career outing last time out. He can be overpowering as a big fastball with uh, some pretty good sink to it. Ranger hitters will try to get, get him to get the ball up in the strike zone. And uh, for right now, until he shows you different, just disregard the breaking ball. You won't see it that much early in the ball game. Yeah, I guess we're not sure which pitcher we're going to get. Buzz, he pitched a great game against Texas. Yeah. A bad game against Minnesota in his last two starts. Seven runs in one, seven innings, and only two runs in the other. I don't see. Taking outside. Yeah, the Rangers in that in that game, too, were able to get him early in the game to get his pitch count up a little bit, but then he shut them down. So that's uh, He's the kind of guy that can do that if you let him off the hook. Fires a strike here to make it 3-1. Delino. 283 average. Had a three-hit game last night. That uh, ties his career high. 11 runs driven in. And ball four. Into the shield. Aboard with a leadoff walk. Well, if you're facing the Rangers and you've watched and you know because of advanced scouting what the liner has done the last three weeks to a month, I think the first thing you say is, well, he's hitting the ball pretty good, but the one thing I can't do is walk him. Yep. And that's exactly what happened to lead off the ball game. Not to start an inning. No. That's that's for sure. And Delino, fifth in the American League in stolen bases. You know, he had about two-thirds as many games as most of the guys. So he has been efficient. Eleven of them. And Shin Su Chu now will get up there to see if he can uh, do something with the Shields at first. He's on the move. The pitch is a strike. The throw is high. The Shields is in with a stolen base. Well, he stole second before they could start to worry about him over there at first base. It was a pretty strong throw from Swihart, who knew he had to get rid of the ball quickly. Delano gets a nice lead, gets up to full speed quickly, and just got in there ahead of the throw. Throws a little bit toward the shortstop side of second base, which made the tag a little bit more difficult. Good, great view of the yep. safe call. All in one now. The count to Chu with the line the shields at second. Now Chu's assignment in this at bat changes. He needs to get up there and try and pull the ball to the right side to at least get the shields to third. And uh, Joe Kelly adjusting and missing outside. One ball and one strike. He Shinsu three out of nine in his career with a home run against Kelly. Right-hander who came over to the Red Sox last year from the Cardinals, part of the deal that sent uh, John Lester, I should say uh, John Lackey, over to St. Louis. Infield swung around to the right uh, three or four steps for Chu. Sandoval, the third baseman, about 20 feet off the line. Two and two. Like Kelly pulled the string on him a little bit. Joe Kelly, basically a fastball slider pitcher. That off-speed pitch, one of the few uh, non-hard pitches he will throw. It's a pretty good sinking action on that fastball when he gets it down in the strike zone. Still two and two. Well, the Rangers already with 18 wins this month. That is uh, an 11-game improvement over what April looked like. Rangers with just seven wins in the month of April and 18 already here in the month of May. That's the uh, most wins in May since 2009. The 2009 team won 20 May ball games. Low and outside. Chu leans on it. Three balls and two strikes. 
Shinsu trying to get aboard to uh, join Delano to Shields. Prince Fielder waiting in the on deck circle will be next. Uh, Fox Tracker showing you. Kelly really making an attempt to keep the ball down and away from Chu. Good breaking ball there. Got him swinging. Well, hadn't thrown one until he came on with three and two to Chu and got the strikeout. Now let's take a look at the uh, Red Sox defense brought to you by Steele. Outfield, uh, Ramirez in left, Betts in center, and Castillo in right. Napoli at first, Pedroia and Bogarts up the middle, Sandoval at third, and Blake Swihart catching for Joe Kelly. A one out, here's Fielder, a 361 average. That's still the best in the American League, and he dumps one into center. Betts coming on, he's got to pull up and play it on a hop. Stopping at third is the Shields. And Delino had that ball go right over his head as he let off from second. So it's probably pretty tough for him to tell distance-wise how far it was going to go. I couldn't, tell, I couldn't tell from up here. Yeah. It looked like it was a ball that Betts, with his speed, might be able to come sprinting in and make a shoestring catch. So if you're Delino, that's all you could do is wait and see what happened. Betts, instead of going for the catch, played it on a hop. Delino will take third base, and you still feel pretty good about that. You've got Adrian Beltre coming up, stay out of the double play, and... Still have a great chance to get a run in right here. He didn't want to take off for third, have Betts come yeah. in and make a sliding catch and end the inning with a double play. Adrian ripping through that uh, fastball from Joe Kelly. Well, Kelly's got a good fastball. He was throwing 95 miles an hour in the seventh inning in Boston, around 100 pitches. That's what he just tuned the, that last fastball up at 95 miles an hour. Adrian, a 251 average. Took something off that and got it over the outside corner. Pretty good changeup. 0 oh 2. Adrian, six home runs, 16 RBI. A little bit better than the league average for Adrian, scoring that runner from third with less than two outs. That jammed by that uh, sinking fastball. Still nothing in two. Well, the Rangers, as a team, have uh, had a very good month of May. And not just in the win-loss column. Obviously, that has been good, too. But as a team, they've hit 275 in the month. That leads the American League. Also up there, leaders in runs. Well, three fouls it out of play. Extra base hits, total bases, slugging. There's our... American League leaderboard, four percentage points over Toronto. Rangers on top. Adrian, you see number four right near the middle of the plate. He was right on that pitch. It was a high changeup. The left field into the corner and hooking going foul. That's when you hope it stays fair, even if he catches yeah. it. Yeah. It bounces for a double grade. If he catches it, he'll sacrifice fly. That'd be all right, too. Especially down in the count, 0 and 2. Right. He'll take a sacrifice fly right here. And the strikeout leaders, the toughest to strike out, Adrian, fifth in the American League. Just a little bit over 10 plate appearances per strikeout. Spoiling that pitch. He definitely expands his zone with a man on third base. And he makes contact on pitches that are sometimes well out of the strike zone. And for Kelly, you got to just decide how far can I throw it out of the strike <laughs> zone and so my catcher can still catch it. Exactly. You saw Delano to Shields down there at third. Over at first, Prince Fielder, one out in the bottom of the first. Rangers playing catch up, they trail one nothing. That pitch high, Adrian able to lay off of it. One and two. Adrian, a little bit of a downturn. John Farrell's ball club has uh, held him in check. Beltre, 0 for his last nine trips to the plate. Had a double here on Thursday night. That was the last hit he's gotten. 
Slowly hit to third. Sandoval has only one play. That's the first. Beltre gets the run home. The Shield scores. And Adrian Beltre with the RBI ground out. We are deadlocked now at one apiece. Well, that's what you're looking for. Anything but a strikeout. Take your chances on contact. Obviously, there's other ways you're not going to score, too. But put the ball in play and see what happens. Doesn't have to be anything great, but it has to be contact. In this case, soft contact to third base is the best thing you could hit to third base. Can't turn a double play. Can't make the play at the plate. Get the run in. Still have a man in scoring position. So fielder now in sec at second for Mitch Moreland. Moreland hitting in an even 300. Five home runs, 18 driven in. Takes ball one. Swihart having that ball go right down between his feet and spinning around trying to figure out where it was. And Mitch is one for five in his career against uh, Joe Kelly, but boy, against the Red Sox, Mitch is really lit up Boston in his career. 16 games. Mitch has hit 4-11. Five home runs in those 16 games and 10 RBI. And he's ahead in the count now. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the numbers we were just talking about. Prince Fielder. Dumped a single into center field. He's now in scoring position with two outs. Rangers and Red Sox tied at one. Changeup miss. Three balls and no strikes. Look, Kelly's definitely pitching Mitch like first base is open, knowing there's a right hand hitter coming up next, and knowing Mitch is a big time RBI threat at the plate. 321 in his last two, we last two weeks. I would bet he'd have the green light here if yeah. he got a pitch to his liking. I would, too. Kelly with a 3-0. He did hit it hard, but pulled it right on the ground to Pedroia. Side retired, but the Rangers come back to tie it up. They get a run on a hit and leave one after one. Rangers one, Red Sox one. Crowd out here looks to be yeah, in the low 30s, maybe mid 30s. It's been a great crowd uh, for this entire Red Sox series. Pablo Sandoval coming to bat. And uh, Sandoval, as we were talking the other night, a switch hitter, but has chosen to bat left handed against left handed pitchers of late. He is just having a devil of a time. Five for 42 this year against left handers. And he's pretty much abandoned hitting from the right side of the plate. So the heck with it. I'm going to 
take offers, I might as well take them on the side. I feel better. Yeah, and that I would think would take a little bit of an adjustment facing a lefty batting left handed, having been a switch hitter your whole career. And he lines one to center. He's got another base hit. He saw the graphic. He had five hits, three hits, I should say, in his last five at bats against left handers. You know, he had four out of six. Looking at Sandoval and th rethinking that, I don't know if it takes much of an adjustment for him. He's just one of those slashing type hitters that goes up and looks for the ball and takes his hacks. Well, I, I don't think it makes mu much difference to him. <laughs> and if left handed is his best, his best way of swinging, what makes him confident and feels the best, smart decision. Here's the shortstop, Xander Bogarts. He takes strike one. Bogarts, a three or two sixty-three average, we should say, with a couple of home runs. He has driven in sixteen, but uh, fall on a little bit of hard time. Bogarts, oh for his last fifteen times of the plate, softly hit to Castillo. The only play, or I should say, Alberto. The only play for Alberto is the first into scoring position. Pablo Sandoval and Blake Swihart will come up. Well, you know, Andrew Alberto with his first uh, action here this afternoon. Man in scoring position with one out. Swihart, uh, 224 average. And he is a switch hitter who hits right handed against left handed pitching. Takes that breaking ball for ball one. Swihart this year against left handers, just three for 17. Good slow hook. A ball and a strike. The most young hitters can hit a fastball if they're in the big leagues. They couldn't get to the big leagues if they couldn't hit a fastball, but not many times in the minor leagues do you see an accomplished pitcher with this kind of a curveball. So I would think that would be a little adjustment for a young hitter. And after you've had the slow curveball, not quite ready for the fastball that you might have been looking for the pitch before. One and two. Tried the breaking ball again and left it wide. Two balls, two strikes. Swihart, during his uh, current hitting streak, which now stands at seven games, in the 333 hitter, on eight for 24. And another breaking ball was able just to stay alive. That's why I had a 23 year old. Only one of the top prospects. He was the top catching prospect in all of baseball, according to Baseball America, prior to this year. Out of play to the right. Runners in scoring position this year. That's an area where the Red Sox have had a tough time. Swihart has been pretty good. 278. Got him swinging. Wandy Rodriguez staying with that good breaking ball and got him in a pretty good spot to get the strikeout. As long as you don't hang it, I don't think you can go wrong with that slow curveball to a young hitter. It's just breaking so much. It's technically a strike, too. It looked like it was low, but if you look at the box tracks, it caught the bottom of the strike zone. It's a very tough pitch to lay off of, and even veteran hitters have a hard time with a good curveball. Now, Rusne Castillo takes strike one. Castillo, 192 with the average. It's just his uh, eighth ball game of the year with the Red Sox, called up from Triple A. Hasn't seen a whole lot of action in uh, American baseball. Played the last five years in the Syrian Nacional, Nacional down in uh, Cuba. Red Sox signed him to a big free agent contract. And tried to get him some games last year. He only had a handful of games in 2014. The same was true here in 2015. He's not necessarily a young hitter, but he's an inexperienced hitter, so he may fall the same category as Swihart as opposed to that. As far as trying to hit that slow curveball mm -hmm. goes. It's a couple of fastballs in and 
If this is in that back kind of like Swihart's, he's liable to see that curveball again right here. Two and two the count. Tried the fastball one more time. So a full count. You one he run one of that one. <laughs> can't go wrong with that pitch if he can hit the inside corner with it. Yeah, Fox track showing you the pitches. It looked a lot closer from up here. Breaking ball hit on one hop, knocked down by Elvis. It gets away from him, so everybody's going to advance on the third base. Sandoval safely aboard at first is Castillo. And that was a, a rocket that came up, and Elvis got a lot of leather on it, but it kind of flipped over toward third away from him. And we'll see how that's going to be scored. He got enough leather on it to at least knock it down. So that Sandoval couldn't score if it rolled into the outfield. That's one of those in between hops. It's not a big easy hop and it's not a short hop that you can pick. It's one of those hard hit balls that takes a relatively short hop, but a quick hop. And you don't have a lot of time to gauge where it's going to be. Well, the base hit. Runners now at the corners with two outs. And it takes the Red Sox back to the top of the order for Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia began things this afternoon by skying to center field. Pedroia with a 10 game hitting streak coming into play here this afternoon. Ball one. I mentioned this is Pedroia's ninth consecutive game in the leadoff spot. He's been a 375 hitter over the first eight games. As that number one hitter, there are the numbers on his 10 game hitting streak. Taking a strike here to even things out at one and one. This the seventh game of this uh, road trip for the Red Sox and Pedroia has gone 10 for 25. Two and one. Well, Wandy Rodriguez. Uh, uh, Pedroia may be the, the guy that he say well between he and Betts I may want to be careful of Pedroia and take my chances with Betts. <laughs> Off of Adrian out into left field in to score Sandoval stopping at second is Castillo and the Red Sox back on top two to one. Well, I tell you, for early in the game one and two thirds innings that's the third tricky hop that the Rangers have gotten. Mitch got one in the first inning that might have been a double play turned out to an to one out but the man got to second base and scored Elvis got a tricky hop Adrian just got a tricky hop neither one of them could handle it and essentially the Red Sox have had two runs because of those tricky hops off infielders gloves and that's going to be scored an error on uh, Adrian Beltre. No the first error of the ball game. Red Sox back on top and here's Mookie Betts who had an infield single in the first inning. That's a 250 average as he stands at home plate. Hard hit ball. Hell was able to short hop that one and on to second for the force. Well that'll do it but the Red Sox regain the lead. They get a run on two hits and an error and leave two after one and a half. Boston two the Rangers one.
brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. The Ford Memorial Day EcoBoost sales event is here. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The well, Rangers again find themselves trailing by one as they come to the plate. Elvis Andrus, Leonis Martin, Carlos Corporan to uh, be the first three hitters to face Joe Kelly. And the right-hander pours in strike one. Elvis, a 240 hitter. Couple of home runs, 18 RBI. Chopper right back to Kelly. Elvis retired, one away. And Leonis Martin will come up. And before uh, Leonis Martin comes up, let's welcome in Jim Knox. Jim. Oh, I appreciate it, Buzz. Great crowd here on a Sunday afternoon. Ranger fans hoping for another win against the Red Sox. And how about Elvis? That's right. Who? No, no Red Sox. Get out of here. How about Elvis? He is a big-time sponsor of Special Olympics Texas. He participated in the torch run a couple of weeks ago. And Elvis says Special Olympics Texas is very special to him. Special Olympic it always uh, it's a it's a good give back. I think that you know always been really involved uh, helping special kids you know with special needs and uh, it's something that I've been doing since like five years ago. Even when I'm back home uh, trying to help uh, special needs and uh, it's it's an activity that I love that I really enjoy it. I just can't wait to keep helping uh, the Special Olympics. And Elvis, of course, helping out a great cause. Special Olympic Texas. Look at these little little leaguers here. Ready for a foul ball, Tom. Boy, this glove, look, you need to get a new mitt there. Check that out. That guy's worn it out. Let's see this. Hold it the camera there. A little worn out there, big guy. We'll help you out. Okay. <laughs> he's probably just getting broken yeah, in. That means he's just got it broken in exactly how he wants That's it. That's right. The Martin rips one, but right at Mike Napoli. And he got an off-speed pitch, got out in front of it, and had double or triple written all over it until Napoli picked that out of the air. It's a hanger and hits it hard. Napoli feels it hit his glove, looks down to make sure it's still in there. <laughs> now two up, two away here in the second inning. Carlos Corporan now, the switch hitting catcher for the Rangers. Corporan at 172. A home run five driven in. Going the other way, and it's by Bogarts into left center field. Well, the shift was on, and Bogarts shading him way up the middle. Just couldn't get back, and Corporan has an opposite field base hit with two outs. Well, the second Ranger hit of the afternoon. Now Hanser Alberto. Alberto with a hit and an RBI in each of his first two ball games at the big league level. Had a uh, a triple and an RBI in his for his first major league hit. That triple and scored a run on that same play. He's just the uh, fifth Ranger ever to have. That combination in his uh, first couple of games, a hit and an RBI. Rounds into the fielder's choice here, and the Rangers' second comes to a close. No runs, a hit, and one man left. After two, Red Sox two, Rangers one.
Baseball.com at bat. It's the number one app for uh, live baseball at bat. Is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Now the Red Sox coming to bat here in the top of the third inning, leading 2-1. to one. And David Ortiz taking strike one. Ortiz 0 for 1, a ground ball to first in the first. One ball, one strike. Ortiz with an average at just 222, but you know when he comes up against the Rangers, and especially in this ballpark, you can throw the rest of the numbers out the window because he's hit well and he's riding a 15 game hitting streak here at Globe Life Park. 303 average, 19 home runs in those 15 games. Or, excuse me, in the 56 games that he has played here. 1 2 pitch. Andy Rodriguez studying the signs from Carlos Corporan. And up the middle. That is into center field, a base hit. No Ortiz, a leadoff single. He is aboard for handling Ramirez. And before Ramirez comes up, let's send it over to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. If he coasted into second, that meant Delino would have been coasting for an inside the park home run, probably. Yeah. It's probably been said he's been coasting before, but that's you can't tell when he's not coasting. Yeah, it probably looks exactly <laughs> the same. He's got one speed. It's you know, we, all, we always make fun of Cologne and his size, but he's yeah. one guy that size really has never been an issue with him. No, nope. it's just what he looks like. But as far as what he's done and how he's pitched, it really hasn't mattered. Been unbelievably durable. Durable. Well, speaking of the Marlins, how about our T-Mobile game changer, John Carlos Stanton? Five home runs this year have gone over 450 feet, and four home runs <laughs> over 466. <laughs> he is going to make Statcast the thing uh, that everybody pays attention to with with his numbers. Well, when you come to a Marlin game, you want to get there early because batting practice is probably just as much fun as the game. Yeah. Remember when he hit batting practice here last year, they came into town. It wasn't just the long home runs he hit. It was some of the line drives that he hit off yep. the wall. They look, they look like just base hits to left field that go 350 feet. And something. One and two the count to Hanley Ramirez. And he popped it up. Good fastball. Got in on him. Answer Alberto backpedaling into shallow right. That is out number one. And Mike Napoli will be next. First baseman, Mike Napoli. There's that cut fastball we were talking about in uh, reference to what Wandy Rodriguez has added to his repertoire over the last couple of years. And that one, he got right in on the, in on the fists. A lot of them have been just a little bit off the plate. They've been good pitches, but they've been three or four inches inside. That one he got on the inside part of the plate. Ramirez had to swing at it. The one out, Mike Napoli, a fly ball to right his first time. One ball, no strikes. See the numbers for Napoli. A 2-12 average. Eight home runs, 22 RBI. Also had five home runs in his last 12 ball games. That's a strike. One and one. Napoli's on another kind of streak too. Of late, he's had two walks in each of the last three ball games. When you think about it for a minute. That's that's a pretty good streak. 
always been a, a patient hitter, but uh, you know, doing that three consecutive games where you get two walks, that's a little bit unusual. Two and one. Now three and one. Napoli hitting fifth in the order. Trying to get aboard to join David Ortiz. Pablo Sandoval, the third baseman, is next. Pop foul, and that will fill the count. Well, the Red Sox, as they'll do to most pitchers, getting Rodriguez to work a lot of pitches from the mound. This will be 57 coming up for Wandy Rodriguez, and he only has one out here in the third inning. Double play grounded Elvis. They will turn it over. Alberto to Morgan. Taylor made double play. The only thing they have to do is have Elvis catch the ball, and he did. That'll do it. No runs a hit. Nobody left. Bottom of the third coming up. It's Red Sox 2 and the Rangers 1 on Fox Sports Southwest. Today, I guess the Lubbock folks, right? Absolutely. WTO 4.3, courtesy Fox Sports Fan Express, made the trip all the way to Lubbock, Texas. How's that bus ride, Joe? Oh, it's an absolute blast. If you ever get a chance to do it, you need to get on the bus. Eddie is a fantastic bus driver, gets you all the way here. And what better way can we spend a Sunday than watching the Texas Rangers play a baseball game? Yeah, I like your spirit. Good to have the folks in Lubbock in town. You know, Emily's down there, you know. She's Absolutely. All right. She's one of our good friends. We've talked to her a lot of times on That's the station. Right. Okay, good. Good to have you here. We'll see you uh, a little bit later on and uh, enjoy the game. All right, guys? Absolutely. All right, there we go. Good to see the folks from Lubbock. It's uh, always a lively group that comes this way. The liner to Shields starting off the things for the Rangers here in the third inning. It's a little two hop around to Pedroia for out number one. The well, folks fans 13 and under can join the official kids fan club of the Rangers. Membership in the Junior Rangers Club is only $20 and it includes a Junior Rangers sweatshirt bag, baseball ticket vouchers and coupons, and front of the line access to run the bases after Sunday afternoon games and a whole lot more. Sign up at TexasRangers.com slash JR Rangers. Shinsu Chu struck out his first time and Trying to plead his case with home plate umpire Tim Welke, and they don't win many of those, Buzz. No, I haven't seen. Did you ever win one as a pitcher? No, no. I lost several that I know of, but <laughs> never did one win one. Jew went down swinging his first time up there. 
just a little bit short. Two and one. Joe Kelly having that changeup stick in his hand. Couldn't get it out of there. It's kind of like having glue on it. You try to shake it off and just comes short of home plate. Two and two. And Chu again. Not happy with the call. That's a borderline pitch. We see called on him a lot up and away. Sometimes it catches the top of the strike zone. Sometimes it's like that. You know, that's that's not a strike. It's borderline even if it is a strike. See that for some reason you see that pitch called on him more often than other left hand hitters. I don't know why. It's been that way since he's been here. Kelly a couple of nods. Now into the wine for the payoff pitch. The appeal to third, no swing, and Q draws the walk. He knows the strike zone, and it didn't get him, even though that other one was called a strike, it didn't cause him to expand the strike zone and swing at one that was out of the strike zone, and that time he got the call. No, no second walk issued by Joe Kelly. One on, one out, Prince Fielder. Had a uh, soft line drive into center for a base hit his first time up there. One ball, no strikes. Well, Prince now with the average at 365. He came into play, as we mentioned, the best average in the American League and trailing only D. Gordon in all of baseball. Gordon with the Marlins. 374 average coming into play today. Change up. That's low and outside. Two balls, no strikes. Prince Fielder also going up the ladder on uh, the Ranger historical list of most hits in a month, any month. He has now at 46. And up the middle, Bogarts to second. Oh. Dropped by Pedroia. And Chu and everybody else is safe. Well, it looked like once Bogarts got to that ball, it was going to be a double play. Pedroia came across the bag. He threw him a little bit of a changeup, it looked like. Threw it a little high. I don't know if that fact fooled Pedroia, but as Pedroia comes across the bag, tries to field it barehanded and couldn't do it. Maybe a little high on the throw. We'll have to get Mac to analyze that for us when he gets over here. Yeah, Pedroia looked like he was trying to catch the ball barehanded and find the bag at the same time. That, yeah. that usually doesn't work. And make a quick throw. Well, it's going to be a fielder's choice to allow fielder to reach. An error on Pedroia for dropping the throw. Well, the first error committed uh, by the Red Sox. Two on with one out. Adrian Beltre, who had an RBI on a ground out in the first inning. We'll step in. Adrian now with 17 runs driven in this year. Pops one foul. That will reach the seats on the first base side. A ball and a strike. Adrian just won for his last 14 times to the plate. He's got Chu at second base. Fielder at first. Rangers down by a run here in the third inning. Up the middle. Off the glove. Of Pedroia into center. Chu will score. And Beltray with another RBI ties the ball game at two. And that was a bullet. That was a bullet. It was a good thing it was because Pedroia almost caught it anyway. Had to hold your breath on that one. Pedroia is an excellent defensive player. All out dive. Got his glove on it. Couldn't knock it down and goes into center field for a run. Luckily it was hit that hard. Well, Adrian Beltre has driven in both Ranger runs this afternoon. Now fielder at second, Beltre at first for Mitch Moreland. One ball, no strikes. The Rangers take advantage of the one out walk and the error. The play to run, trying to make it a big inning. 
Now both walks that Kelly has allowed this afternoon have scored. Both scored, yeah. Mitch Moreland, first time up, got the count to 3 0, and then hit a very sharp ground ball out to second. So the out. And Mitch now 297. Five home runs, 18 RBI. Fielder out there carrying RBI number 19 for Mitch. Kelly ready for the 1-0. Two balls, no strikes. Mitch hasn't seen a whole lot to work with. Seen six pitches. Five of them have been uh, out of the strike zone. Yeah, the one strike he got was a 3 0 pitch, and he smoked it right straight yeah. to the second baseman. He sure did. Kelly again with a belt high set. And Mitch chops that foul. Mitch with his surgery and it was on the disabled list. 15 games have elapsed since he, he was activated back on the 13th of the month. He's hit almost exactly what he's hitting overall. 297. Threw him a changeup. Two and two. Joe Kelly about ready to unleash his 55th pitch of the afternoon. John Farrell, the Red Sox skipper, keeping a close eye on things. Two on with one out. Still two and two. The Fox tracker showing you. Last two pitches staying away from Mitch. Kelly reading the signs from Swihart. Fielder gets his lead at second base. Inside three and two. He's trying to get it in there. Came close. Mitch got that call. Alonga with a full count. Fielder and Beltre. At second and first. Kelly ready. Payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Went to the changeup. And Kelly records his second strikeout of the afternoon. That's pretty good pitching there. Dangerous part of the game, first and second. Mitch is swinging the bat well. Tried to get him with the inside pitch. Fastball missed just barely and then came back with the changeup. Two times he had Mitch out in front of that pitch. It's a good changeup. Now here's Elvis. Elvis hit a comebacker to uh, Joe Kelly as he let off the second inning. First pitch is high for ball one. And Swihart getting out there. Have a little chat with uh, Joe Kelly. He probably noticed Joe Kelly a couple times this afternoon on that last pitch in particular. Hadn't really picked up the target before he started his move toward home plate. And sometimes a pitcher won't even recognize he's doing that in an attempt to take a look at the runner. You don't pick up your target first. It's hard to have as good a command as you want to have. You need to be able to look where you're throwing, where you want the ball to go. One ball, one strike. Here's an example of that good arm that Kelly's got. 97 miles an hour with that fastball. When he has good stuff, you look at his ERA, which is 624, and say to yourself, how in the world can a guy yeah. with this stuff have an ERA of 624? Yep. 95 mile an hour sinking fastball, slider, and pretty good changeup. Just goes to show you how hard it is to get big league hitters out. You have to have more than just a good arm, that's for sure. Pretty good grouping of pitches. 
for Kelly in this at bat against Andrews. Yeah, if you're the hitter and it's two and one after those three pitches, you're feeling pretty good. <laughs> that change up's a little bit low. It's three balls and a strike. Elvis just one for his last 11, but he's hitting a pretty good count here against Joe Kelly. Got Fielder at second, Beltray at first. A run across. Rangers have come back to tie the game, and they're looking to untie it. Check swing. It's a strike anyway. So with two outs now, both Fielder and Beltray will get the advantage of being able to take off with the next pitch. Good pitcher's pitch. Jim Welke, the home plate umpire, ringing that right hand up. Kelly gets a sign, a check of the runners. They're on the move. 3-2 is foul back. That's either been a very economical inning, which the second one was, nine pitches, or the opposite. 25 pitches in the first, 29 here in the third. And he's not finished yet. Carl Willis, the pitching coach. Had that little clicker in his hand. He's wearing it out in the first three innings. Another 3 2 is coming. Slowly hit out toward shortstop. Sandoval can't make the transfer, and everybody's safe. Not even sure if he made the transfer cleanly. He would have gotten Elvis at first. But in any event, the bases are full. For Leonis Martin. And a walk and error, an infield something, hit or an error. Beltre had a smash for his RBI. It gives Leonis Martin a chance to do some damage with the bases loaded. Yeah, that was going to be a close play at first base. Tough call for the official scorekeeper on that one. Well, they've ruled it an error as of right now. That that may change, and, or it may not. Yeah, that was. That, that's just how you see it. it. Looked like he, if he fielded it cleanly, got his throw off accurately and quickly, then looked like he might have had a shot at it. In any event, the Rangers have the bases full. The uh, pitcher coach Carl Willis has finished his conference out there. Leonis Martin coming up. Martin smoked the ball his first time up. Mike Napoli, the first baseman, able to snag it out of the air. Martin has had at least one hit in each of his last three games. He's gone five for ten. One ball, no strikes. Leonis also three for his last five with runners in scoring position. A strike. One is raising his arms up and letting it go by. That's all the way in the strike zone. Hit that pitch again and rip it to right field for a double. He did. But Napoli cut it off and on to Kelly covering. That'll do it. Rangers, though, do get a run. They had a run on uh, one hit. There were two errors, and they leave the bases full. We'll go to the fourth. Deadlocked at two.
Don't miss this chance to win some great prizes and to meet one of your favorite Texas Rangers at Whataburger. Now a 2-2 ball game now as the uh, Red Sox come to bat here in the top of the fourth inning. Bobo Sandoval to start things off. A beautiful sun, shiny Sunday afternoon. And joining us in the booth, as always here at home, Mark McLemore, our doctor of defense. Mac, what's uh, what's going on with you? Everything all right? Everything is good. Good. Could be better. We need a few more runs. Need, yeah. And that'll take care of it for me. Uh, and... If, if things go as they have lately, we'll get some more here shortly. It looks like the way these guys are going. Been to scoring some runs, haven't they? We, we have been scoring some runs, but Joe Kelly's a tough pitcher. He was uh, pretty tough on him back in Boston. Sandoval fighting that pitch. I, I got to ask you now. You switch it your entire your entire career. Mm -hmm. Sandoval is having such a tough time against left-handed pitching. Said the heck with it. I'm going to bat left-handed. Could you ever imagine doing that as a hitter yourself, a switcher? No way. Nice play by Elvis. We haven't seen that one all year. That wasn't a very hard hit ball either. He had to go a long way and just barely nip Sandoval with a perfect throw. It's a beautiful play. I love seeing him make that play there. Not many shortstops can make that play. Typically when he catches it, you're out because he throws it right on target. Perfect throw. But no, Buzz, back to your question. Yeah. There's no way I could have ever um, stopped one side or the other because I've done it since I was a kid. Uh -huh. I think most guys that switch hit typically start maybe when they get in the minor leagues or later. So they've seen, you know, a right-hander on right-hander or lefty on lefty. I never really did. Right. Elvis deep in the hole. Strong throw, not in time. There's too much speed from Bogarts. Elvis, uh, now had to take the time to set his feet because he had a long throw. Yeah, that was a tough play for him back, back that deep with Bogarts being able to run the way that he does. He catches it here, but you see he has to come back to change his momentum, and that's what did it right there. It's a great throw off, but Bogarts is a little too quick. So what do you have to do, Mac? Just you don't have time to take that last throw step. It. You just nope. have to throw it. You got to throw it. You have no chance to take change your momentum and go the other way. You've just got to get you know throw from a standstill like Beltre does a lot yeah. of times. But almost like he underestimated Bogart's speed there. Yep. He didn't have time to make the play that way. And that goes as an infield single, which uh, you can certainly understand. Bogart's aboard. That's the sixth base hit for the Red Sox here this afternoon. Blake Swihart, a strikeout, his first time up. And that's I think the third fastball he's seen altogether. Everything else has had a wrinkle in it. Swihart at 221 with the average. Remember John Farrell the other night used uh, Swihart in a hit and run attempt. Fouled the pitch off, but this might be an opportunity for him to do something if he has that kind of faith in Swihart's uh, ability to, to put the ball in play. Yeah, I think it's a, good, a great a great opportunity for him. And what it really does is help a guy that's struggling a little bit as well. You know, making him concentrate on the ball to make contact and get it on the ground. And not necessarily looking to go the other way, but just make contact mm -hmm. on the ground, not not a fly ball. So a lot of times that does get a hitter going when they're when they've been struggling. That's why checking with Brian Butterfield down there at third. Bogarts, the uh, runner at first. Pretty good lead. He's staying put. That's why shoots one out of play to the right. Two balls, two strikes. Wandy appearing in for the sign. Next pitch will be a 69th of the afternoon. Got one on, one out here in the top of the fourth inning. Uncle Charlie got him again. <laughs> He's got a good curveball, and unfortunately for Blake Swihart, he's seen some of the best yeah. ones today. He has. That's just one. You can't lay off it. You can't not swing at it because it's coming straight down. It probably catches the bottom of the strike zone. Swihart's kind of knocking himself, but until you played for a while, that's just pitch you're going to have to get used to seeing and you don't see many as good as Wandy's. 
That's called veteran abuse right there. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Taking advantage of the young kid. Yeah. You know, you learn over a period of time to become a better breaking ball hitter. Mitch right at the bag. A nice backhand. And he just reaches over and touches the bag with the ball in hand. Well, a good defensive play. That'll do it. Red Sox get a hit, but strand a runner. Three and a half in the books. Rangers two, Red Sox two. part due to an error underhanded uh, toss by Sander Bogarts to uh, Dustin Pedroia who dropped the ball and Mac now explain what to us what happened here what was going through his head well number one Bogarts kind of flipped that a little bit high but I think what what uh, Pedroia was trying to do was trying to catch the ball barehanded and touch the bag at the same time but with the ball being a little higher than he anticipated it probably threw him off a little bit and you know you, you don't typically see Pedroia make uh, make mistakes like this you see him right there. He took his head off the ball looking down at the bag because it kind of took him out of rhythm. And that's pretty much what did it there. And that's all it takes. Just that just that fraction of a second of not watching the ball and you'll miss it. You're right. He uh, the gold glove second baseman that doesn't uh, doesn't make defensive mistakes. Yeah, you see here what I'm talking about. The Bogarts gets it flips it a little bit high. He's got his footwork in step. Now he takes his head off 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 the ball right there. And that's what did it. But as you're coming to second base to turn that double play, especially when that shortstop's behind second base, you, you want to shuffle your feet a little bit just because you're anticipating a bad throw. But sometimes, even though you may anticipate it, you're still not able to get it. But the combination of that and throwing, you know, throwing his footwork off, that's what did it. Boy, well, now Berto just rifled one right off the uh, glove and lower leg of Joe Kelly. Yeah, deflected over toward third base and... Alberto's aboard with a base hit. Not having been an infielder, Mac, but if I tried to envision myself as a second baseman, it must be an awkward throw to receive when the shortstop, take another look at the shot off the glove or maybe off the wrist, when the shortstop's almost behind you. It's, if it's not in front of you. It's a little tricky, isn't it? It's very tricky because what people don't realize in, in that situation, there's a runner coming down trying to put you on that yeah, left field wall. That's right. So you've got your back completely to him, and you don't know if he's coming in just as a courtesy slide or if he's trying to hang you up on that on that fence out there in left field. So you've got a lot of things that are going on through your mind in your mind when that happens. Slice down the right field line and foul off the bat of Delano to Shields. The best favor Bogarts could have done on that play is throw it about belt high and out in front of him so he... You know, he sees it all the way, and it's out in front of him. He doesn't have to reach back for it. That You're exactly right. And I think it just, you know, Bogart's just a little nonchalant there, a little flip up. And, you know, you've got to get it firm around the chest somewhere and give him, give that second baseman an opportunity, number one, catch it and get one out, and then possibly even turn two. And I know Pedroia was definitely trying to get two. Yeah, he was. One. Now, Alberto at first. 
0-1 pitch. He is chop foul. Nothing in two now to uh, Delano to Shields. The Shields walked and scored, leading off the first inning. Last time up in the third, he grounded out the second. And Delano, the average at 280 as he is at the plate. Shields hit safely in eight of his last nine ball games in a 333 clip. One ball and two strikes. A 2 2 ball game. Rangers trying to get on top for the first time this afternoon. Red Sox led 1-0 after a half inning. Rangers tied it. Red Sox put one on the board in the top of the second. Rangers tied it in the bottom of the third. Andrew Alberto getting his lead from first base. Good job by DeShields of laying off the breaking ball. Two and two. You like what do you see out of uh, DeShields from an offensive standpoint? I, I really do. I think he's doing everything that you that you can expect out of a leadoff hitter. He takes walks. He sees pitches. Takes the ball the other way. He can bunt. Obviously, he can run. And uh, he's a catalyst. When he gets on, things happen. He yep. scores runs. They find a way to get him across. And you know, when you've got uh, Beltre and, and Prince, and now Josh and Moreland behind him with you know with runners on scoring position, especially you know. Beltre and, and Prince, those guys are just RBI machines. So mm -hmm. having somebody out there like that on a consistent basis is what the, what this team and every team needs at the top of the order. I think the thing that I'm really impressed with is the way he played second base the other night. Yeah. Having not played it at all this year and then going out there and making a couple of nice plays and just looking very, very comfortable. Yeah, and even though he takes a lot of ground balls, uh, during batting practice, before batting practice, second base, a little different taking it between the white lines. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely different. When, you know, when this game starts, hey, it speeds up, you know, that much makes it that much quicker. Two and two the count. Kelly at check of first. Alberto on the move and DeShields out to left. Ramirez able to corral that. That is out number two. And Shinsu Chu now will come up. Here's that uh, day game Mac was talking about where he got the, the ball found him a couple of times out at second base. I think that Looks was like a second baseman. He yeah. does, doesn't he? He ate that hop up, had his feet in position to turn around and get the, get the lead out at second base. Very nice. Nice and smooth. Didn't try to rush anything. Just uh, went through it the way he was supposed to. Well, being able to do that, even if you don't start a game at second base, is, has huge value to a manager. And Jeff Bannister has said that a number of times. Likes his extra men to be able to play multiple positions. So having it in the back of your mind that you might not start him at second base, but he can play there and do well during a game when you start maneuvering around is still a very valuable thing to be able to do. It's huge. Managers, you know, one thing managers love is having options. The more options you have, the better you, the better chance you stand at making a, a great move or a good move for your team and win a ball game. So, having Delano be, play multiple positions, uh, Mitch Moreland can play multiple positions, um, Rosales can play multiple positions. The outfielders pretty much all can. Josh, left, right, he can even play center. So that uh, that definitely helps. That gives mm -hmm. that manager some extra options and, and some extra moves that he can he can actually make and it becomes in today's game even more important when you have 11 and 12 man bullpens it used to be there was six extra men on a team and you didn't need the versatility because you had the manpower but now with a four man bench and right now the Rangers have a three man bench versatility is vital two waiting two balls and a strike to count. The center field. That's got a kind of a late start, so he's going to have to play on a hop. 
Checking in at second, hands are Alberto and Shin Su Chu with his first hit of the afternoon. Two on and two out for Princefield. Hey, love to keep the inning going. Have Prince hit with a couple of men on rather than lead off an inning. Chu serves a fastball out to center field. Pretty good pitch to hit. The second or third ball today that looked like Betts might be able to catch it, but on that one with two outs, you're better off making sure you catch it and letting it get by you. A fielder up there, one for two this afternoon, and uh, Red Sox not overshifting nearly as drastically as they have in the past with fielder up there. I think Prince has uh, pretty well taught them that with runners in scoring position, forget that shift because he'll take the ball the other way. We're talking about the most hits in a month. Fielder tying Rafael Palmero for the fifth spot or fourth spot on that uh, list. 46 hits in the month. And that's just for any month. Right back to Joe Kelly. He will flip it over to Napoli and that'll do it. Well, a couple of hits, two left on board for the Rangers. We'll move on to the fifth inning. It remains the Rangers two and the Red Sox two. Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by the Mazda 6. J.D. Power has awarded the Mazda 6 highest ranked vehicle appeal among mid-sized cars. A well, very comfortably warm afternoon. 77 degrees at first pitch. Maybe up a, a degree or two here this afternoon. Gentle breezes. Moving out toward uh, right field. Lots of sun overhead. And boy, what a great sight. I know for all the rain weary fans here in North Texas. Certainly glad uh, for all of you who are recovering from uh, losses well. And our thoughts and prayers are with those who are still struggling with it. Dustin Pedroia leading off in the fifth inning. Pedroia. Reached on an error his last time up. 0 for 2 today. Currently hitting at 293. 2 and 1. Wandy Rodriguez. This will be his 75th pitch of the afternoon. He gets a pop foul that will be about six rows over the Ranger dugout. Two balls, two strikes. Wani peering in for the sign. And Pedroia rifles one Oof. foul. Back into the crowd down there in the fourth row. Oh, 
Boy, those are dangerous. That could have hit 15 different people the way that thing skimmed into the stands. Pedroia gone on strikes. As Wandy Rodriguez went down and away. That is out number one. They don't strike Pedroia out very much. He's a guy that walks as many times as he strikes out. He makes a nice pitch on him, though, down and away. Snuck it by Pedroia. Right at the bottom of that strike zone, too. Pedroia, last 10 games, almost a 400 hitter. Mookie Betts, first ball swinging. That uh, is going to slice back into the seats. Mitch Moreland over there just to take a look at it. 0 and 1, the count to Betts. Had a uh, first inning single and scored in that first inning. Rounded into a fielder's choice in the second. A 249 hitter. One ball and one strike. Pulled the string. Rodriguez gets a strike. One and two. That's his hit safely in 11 of his last 13 ball games. He pulls this one down the left field line, but he pulled it too much. Back into the seat short of the uh, foul pole down there. Still one and two. And another ground ball foul. And the Red Sox today, two runs on six hits. They've committed two errors. Rangers two runs on five hits and they have one error. John Farrell's team six games under the 500 mark. They are in fifth place. Four games back of the Yankees. Elvis spinning throwing. Got him. Wow. Well, Elvis has had some chances to shine today. And he has. He's cashing in on them. <laughs> I think he realized who was running that time, so he knew once he was on the ground, he had to take. I don't have time to get up, just flip around and throw it. That's tough to do once you turn your back to first base and be able to spin around and still pick it up. See, he's kind of goes a half slide, turn that head around, found Mitch Moreland over there at first base. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Perfect throw. You know, there are a lot of folks that can't throw the ball that accurately just standing there with <laughs> nothing else going on. Now, when I see plays like that, especially from shortstop, it reminds me of uh, my first spring training playing against Ozzie Smith. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm watching. We're in, in, in uh, St. Pete, as a matter of fact. And I'm watching him take ground balls at shortstop. You know, and he's got his shades on, and he's just taking ground balls and flipping them to first base. And he's not looking at first base. <laughs> he's just getting, I mean, he's, you know, at deep short, not up halfway, on, not halfway or not all the way up on the grass, yeah. but in his normal position to short, shortstop, getting them and going just like this every time. Gee. Perfect strike right over first base. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> and, you know, what he told me, he said, first base never moves. It's always in that yeah. same spot. Yeah. So you get that slot with your arm, just like, I'm sure, I'm sure it's like when you're pitching. You know what that slot is. You yeah. know where first base is. No matter where you are on the on the field, first base does not move. Yep. Boy, and if I ever had a bat against a pitcher that didn't look at home plate, I'd be scared <laughs> to death. Boy, I wouldn't have been I didn't care what his control was like. <laughs> I'd been backing away for sure. Now that that was a drill that we did for pickoffs at first base for right-handed pitchers. Yeah, I put a blindfold on. Oh wow! And you got used to you know having your back to first base and turning and throwing. Uh -huh. So that you get a feel for where you had to release mm -hmm. it. That's, that's a that's a great drill. Left field and hit pretty well. The shields back with room right in front of the out of town scoreboard. Big Poppy gave it a big ride, but it stayed in the yard. Three up, three down. We played half the ball game, and still Rangers two and the Red Sox two.
box or Lexus Club Terrace. And the lower reserve sections are half price when you purchase online thanks to Ozarka. This Tuesday, the perfect time to take advantage of this offer. The Rangers play the White Sox. Get your tickets online at TexasRangers.com slash specials using the online coupon code Ozarka. In the middle third of the uh, Ranger order here in the fifth inning, Beltre, Moreland, and Andrews. And Joe Kelly to work. Missing outside, two balls, no strikes. Adrian has driven home both runs for the Rangers this afternoon. A ground out and a single. Inner part of the plate. And Beltre kind of a questioning look back at uh, Tim Walkie. Well, Adrian. 18 runs driven in. Ooh, he had a rip of that fastball. I think he liked that one back. Went back to the screen, and yeah, that's in an area that uh, Adrian would like to get a, a redo. Two two is on the way. Little looper, and that's going to fall. <laughs> so, I guess he figured, oh, okay, we got away with one that I, that I fouled off. Now I have to loop one in for the leadoff single. No one on nobody out. Mitch Moreland coming up before he steps in. Let's send it over to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. All right, Dana, thank you. Here it's a 2-2 ball game. Hits are now even at half a dozen for each team. Mitch Moreland, a ground out and a strikeout tonight. He pulls one to the right side. Pedroia to second. The return to first, not in time. Beltre, a hard slide into second, and he's a little slow getting up. I wonder if he looked like he jammed his thumb on that base, on the base. Or on Bogarts, one of the two. And when he gets up that slow, you know something hurts. Matt Lucero out there to uh, get to Adrian very quickly. Ooh. Left thumb okay. got caught under the bag, it looked like. Now he got his hip going into the bag as well. Yep. No, done, yeah. Well, Adrian felt off. Matt out there along with Jeff Bannister. And I would imagine Adrian's headed probably into the tunnel. You take a look and see exactly how bad it is. So Moreland now at first with one out. Elvis Andrews the hitter. Elvis is 0 for 2. He reached by an error in the third inning. One ball, no strikes. Elvis a 237 average. One for 10 in his last three ball games, but Go back a little bit further. He's hit 320 in his last eight games. Kelly okay is the sign. A check of first. Our AT&T Humorous Rewind with Elvis at the plate. Watch his defensive skills. The jump throw. And we don't have a name for this one yet, but we're going to have to because he might do it again. The whirling dervish. Hmm. I still don't know how you, how you spin around like that and have any idea where first base is, much less get the ball there accurately. I'd like to say and sound like I played the infield for a long time, but I don't either. 
<laughs> That's a tough one. You, you go on your knees like that and, and, and you're able to spin and find first base. Maybe that's why I played second. I'm not sure. <laughs> you did the same thing at second, I'm sure, from time to time. <laughs> I've rolled a few over there for sure. <laughs> well, into right center field. Coming in a hurry, Castillo with a slide in the catch. Man, he came out of nowhere. I was sure watching did. the center fielder who didn't look like he was going to get to it, and all of a sudden, Castillo just flew into the picture. I actually thought it was going to drop. Castillo played a lot of center field down in Cuba. And he showed you some pretty good closing speed here. Nice wow. play. No, that is out number two. Leonis Martin up for his third at bat. Nothing in one. Martin is lined to first and grounded to first today. 0 for 2, batting 227. More than a short lead at first is Kelly Jackson. Leonis making his fifth start in the last nine ball games. The line of the Shields uh, coming on is cut down on playing time a little bit for Martin, but Martin was struggling offensively, so the time. And he's had off. He spent a lot of hours working on that uh, swing and getting himself feeling comfortable again. Jeff Bannister has to be able to feel fortunate to have a guy like the Shields come on to give Martin the opportunity to work on that a little bit. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, that's getting the line of the Shields is about as cheaply as you can get a good player nowadays. High draft choice, big bonus, but Houston paid it. Rangers picked him up the Rule 5 draft for $50,000, which today's game is pretty much nothing. Right now he's playing every day. Which is more of a bargain basement? Delano De Shields or Josh Hamilton? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> you got Josh for basically nothing. Yeah, yeah. That's that's two pretty good pickups for you. Sure you do is. That. Check swing. It's two balls, two strikes. And it's tough to compare the two. They're such different yeah. kinds of players. But if Delano continues to get this kind of playing time and continues to do the things he's doing, he'll be right in the same conversation. That's yep. for sure. Got him swinging. Kelly with that changeup. Rangers uh, get a hit, but strand a runner. We finish five. It's 2 2. Mac, thanks for joining us. We will catch you after the ball game on Rangers Live.
dreaming of another Ranger win, I'm sure, right? Okay. We have a Guinness Book World Record working on by a few Ranger ladies going on here in the stands. Vicki, what's this about? Well, we are creating the world's largest stocking, but what it's really about is Karen United, which is a yarn. The proceeds go to help children of fallen uh, patriots go to college. So it's for the Children of Fallen Patriots Foundation. We give funds so kids can go to college. So we're knitting for awareness and to raise funds. Good for you. Knit and continue to watch the Rangers game. Hopefully a, a big win for the Rangers today. Appreciate it, Vicki. Absolutely. Go Rangers. Buzz? All right, Noxie, thank you. Hanley Ramirez starting things off for the uh, Red Sox here in the sixth inning. Be Ramirez, Napoli, and Sandoval. Adam Rosales has uh, come into the ballgame to take over for Adrian Beltre, and we have had uh, no word from downstairs. As soon as we do, uh, as to the well-being uh, of Adrian, we will certainly pass that along to you. Adrian heard on that attempt to break up a double play at second base last half inning. Ramirez, one for two today. Had an RBI single in the first. Last time up, popped out to second. Tried the back door. Wandy dropping that breaking ball, and it stayed just a bit outside. Wandy, 91 pitches under his belt as he works here in the sixth inning. Pretty well located fastball. Got that one in on Ramirez. Still a ball and two strikes. Yeah, Wandy in the last, last couple innings really has started to throw a lot of strikes. Had a high pitch count early in the game, and the last couple of innings have really helped him get into the sixth inning. There's over right around 60 plus pitches after three innings. Pop up down the line, long run in, and two. We'll have to play it on a hop. Alberto out there, he couldn't get there. That was just too far to expect him to go. And Chu was playing over in left center and or shading toward left right center. Right couldn't get to the line. So it's a bloop single for Hanley Ramirez. Yeah, it's a tough one for a pitcher who tries to hit the outside corner, gets the hitter to swing at it. You get the result you want, a little weakly hit pop-up. Unfortunately, it's hit to a spot on the field where no one can get to it. At least it wasn't a runner who was aggressive with speed who could have taken second on that play. There goes Ramirez. The throw is high. And he is in with the stolen base. Now, Wandy Rodriguez never, ch never checked him. Uh, Ramirez had a walking lead and just kept on going. Second stolen base of the year for Hanley Ramirez. Yeah, you're right, Buzz. He had a running lead. And even though he doesn't have anywhere close to the speed he had when he, when he was younger, he still has the instincts on yeah. the bases. And he had a pretty good feeling what he was going to try to do if he got to first base. That's one. If he did go over there, you had him picked off yep. because he was no way he could have stopped and gotten back to first. And Napoli now chopping that next breaking ball foul. It's nothing in two. Mike Napoli, 0 for 2 this afternoon, grounded into a double play and flied to right field. Napoli with the average at 210. He stands at home plate. Check swing, call strike three, and he knew Napoli it. knew it. He was turning around the second that ball went by him. Just wasn't ready for the good fastball. Trying to throw it in. And comes back out over the plate, but Napoli wasn't ready for the fastball. Nope. Sure wasn't. That's the fourth strikeout now for Wandy Rodriguez. One gone. Pablo Sandoval. It's a fastball for strike one. Sandoval has uh, had a soft single to center and thrown out on a great play by Elvis Andrews his last time up. There's a pitch that uh, I would imagine would give Sandoval a little trouble. <laughs> dropping down Wandy Rodriguez and 
A big sweeper out there. Yeah, you could be a left hand hitter your whole life. Facing left handed pitchers and not be able to hit that pitch. <laughs> that thing just kept on curving. Hey, try it again. One and two. Sandoval, 255, the average overall. Got one he can get the bat on, but he pops it up. Elvis has it. That is out number two. Folks, a reminder, the Rangers played the last of the three-game series coming up uh, this Thursday against the White Sox. The first 15,000 fans will receive a Texas Rangers yearbook. Don't miss this uh, annual collectible. Come on out to Globe Live Park in Arlington. Get your tickets at Rangers, TexasRangers.com. Or you can call 972 Rangers. No, oh, after the uh, leadoff single and a stolen base, Anley Ramirez, two hitters later, still anchored at second. Here's Xander Bogarts. And he shoots one to right. That's through for a base hit. Coming around third to score is Hanley Ramirez. Xander Bogarts with the RBI single puts the Red Sox back on top, three to two. The hardest hit balls the Red Sox have hit today have been outs. They scored a couple of runs early in the game, taking advantage of bad bounces in the infield. And this inning, they get a run on a little blooper to right field that fell in, and a little dribbler that goes between first and second. Alberto was shaded way up the middle, and the ball was hit much to his left, too much to his left for him to get it. A little toss over to first now to drive Bogarts back. Blake Swihart is the hitter. Swihart maybe had a thought of swinging at that throw to first base. At least it was straight. Didn't have a curve to it. <laughs> the one he's seen from uh, Wandy this afternoon. Swihart has struck out both times that he's faced Wandy Rodriguez. They both come on the, the curveball. John Edwards loosening in the Ranger bullpen. That's out of play. Wandy up to 102 pitches now. He's been able to uh, get into that vicinity pitch count wise each of his last four times out. One ball and one strike. It's the first time since 2011 for Wandy Rodriguez that he's had four straight games of getting over the 100 pitch level. And backdoor breaking ball to Swihart. He said, wait a minute. I didn't swing it. That could be a strike. I can't believe that one was a strike. It is, though. Doesn't look like it, but it is. Rodriguez said a check of first. Couldn't get him to offer it that one. Two and two. Infield and outfield shading Swihart a couple of steps around to the left. And he pokes it out of play to the right. Two balls, two strikes. I would imagine this will be Wandy's last hitter either way. Pitch count up there to Pretty close to his maximum. 113 was the most that he has thrown this year. A full count, so with two outs now. Bogarts will be off and moving with the next pitch. If Swihart's able to get aboard to extend this inning, Rusne Castillo, the number nine man, is in the on deck circle.
Payoff pitch on the way. He's going to need one more. Fox tracker showing the locations of the seven pitches to Blake Swihart. Fastball, the right center field. Leonis Martin coming on, can't get there. Plays it on a hop. Around to third goes Bogarts. And with two outs now, the Red Sox have runners at the corners for Castillo. And Jeff Bannister. Climbing up to the top step of the Ranger dugout, and he is on his way out to the mound. So three hits in the inning, back-to-back -back two-out hits. And it looks like that's going to spell the end of the afternoon for Wandy Rodriguez. He definitely didn't get hit that hard today. They, they had a lot of little grounders and little bloopers. This inning, pretty good example of it. So John Edwards making his way in for the bullpen. Wandy Rodriguez exits to a nice round of applause from the fans on the first base side. Timeout on this pitching change. We're back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. On our Kubota Power Stats, showing you the uh, Tuesday night starter for the Chicago White Sox coming to town. Jeff Smarja, 19 strikeouts, no walks in 15 innings last year against the Rangers. And Smarja splitting time last year with the uh, Cubs and Oakland A's. So he will be on the hill here on Tuesday night. Rosne Castillo, the first hitter that John Edwards face, will face this afternoon. 0 and 1 the count. Now, uh, Corporan out in front of home plate just to uh, make sure that everybody knows what they're doing defensively. Edwards appearing in his fourth ball game, his third since being recalled this last time from AAA Round Rock. Edwards last worked on uh, Friday night, gave up a hit, a walk, and had a strikeout in one inning of uh, scoreless relief. Runner on the move, the pitch is swung on and missed by Castillo. Swihart in with a stolen base. So now two runners in scoring position. And Swihart gets his first stolen base of his career. One and two. Edwards a check of the runners. Two and two. Chuck Morgan flashing an injury update here to the fans at uh, Globe Live Park. Adrian Beltre jammed his left thumb as 
you might have uh, been talking about in the second base. He's being further evaluated to discover the extent of the injury. And if we uh, get any further information, we will certainly pass it along to you. Three balls and two strikes now. Well, after all the breaking balls, if that ball did hit the corners, probably a little inside. But if it was a strike, a little bit to the left, I don't think he would have swung at it anyway. It was inside. Good call by the home plate umpire, Tim Walkie. But he definitely had him set up for the fastball in after all the breaking balls away. This one popped up. Andrews in shallow left center makes the catch. And that'll do it. So Castillo is taken care of by Edwards and Andrews. But the Red Sox take the lead. A run on three hits they leave to after five and a half. Three two Boston. Sonic Slam Inning brought to you by Sonic. Today's jackpot is worth $1,100 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during the inning, Brenda Zapata from Garland will win $1,100. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Brenda will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Now Carlos Corpran will lead things off for the Rangers, and they will be facing a familiar face. It'll be Alexi Ogando coming out of the uh, Red Sox bullpen to take over. I saw Alexi here on Friday night. Well, two-thirds of an inning gave up a couple of runs on three hits. And dealing to Carlos Corporan, who is one for two. Ball one is thrown. Numbers for Ogando is eight, er, 20th appearance of the year. The ERA went up to 379 after giving up those two runs. Corporan a single in the second inning. Grounded a second in the fourth. Ogando is always working from a stretch. One ball and two strikes. Ogando on that uh, one inning here on Friday night, or two-thirds of an inning, gave up a double to Moreland, a single to Chirinos, and a run-scoring triple to Hanser Alberto. That was uh, the first major league hit for Hanser and an RBI. Got him swinging. Good heat from Ogando, mid-90s with a fastball. When Orlando first got to the big leagues with the Rangers, you could pretty much write down the radar gun speed before he threw the ball. It was 96 or 97 almost every time for one inning. 
Had some injuries along the way, some starting assignments along the way. Fastball dropped down a little bit last year. Uh, looking at that last fastball at 95, like he's still got plenty in the tank. Another one at 95. And on our radar gun, on the Fox one, it's 96. Yep. So pretty consistent for Ogando. Anzer Alberto, one for two. And uh, a looper is over the leap of Bogarts. Alberto with his second hit this afternoon and his second hit against Alexi Ogando in his career. Pretty nice job of hitting right there. And a pretty good slider. Well, let's go down and uh, check in with Emily Jones. Em? Well, guys, you can't say enough about the way Hanser Alberto has embraced this opportunity. He says he's not even exactly sure how he's been able to uh, handle it so well. Being around the veteran guys, so they told me how the team going here. So this kind of, you know, that's the, that's the thing to growing up. So I've been learning a lot. And now, I don't know, just try to, to put the game slow down. Like, like, it's the same game. You know, just a different scenario, but it's the same game. And I just enjoy the opportunity right now. And when I asked him, you know, exactly how he's been able to not be overwhelmed and to uh, not put too much pressure on himself, he said, you know what, I really don't know. <laughs> People have been asking me that question, and I really don't know the answer. But that was a, a pretty good answer, and whatever he's doing, it's it's working so far. Yeah, yeah, you would think, yeah, you could say that. It's, no, that yeah, I, I guess you, it, it, it's fairly easy to say it's the same game until you try and do it. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell yourself that, but eventually you start to say, boy, there's 40,000 people here. Yeah. It's a pretty big deal to be in the big leagues. Yeah, another couple of decks on the stadium. and The Shields, a ground ball to Pedroia. That's all they're going to get is the out at second base. And uh, Anzer Alberto making sure that both guards couldn't make off and get off a strong throw. Well, that's about as an aggressive and clean a slide as you can make. Slid plenty soon enough. Just went in hard and aggressively. Then try to roll into him. Just slides and looks like he's out of the baseline. But as long as you can reach back and touch the base with your arm, which watch his left arm, which he can do. Yep. That's pretty much as as good a slide as you can make to break up a double play. Well, that's going to do it for Alexi Ogata with Shinsu Chu coming up. John Farrell wants the left-hander to come on. It looks like Tommy Lane will be coming in. We'll take a timeout and tell you all about him when we come back. 3-2 Boston on Fox Sports Southwest. Come on out and catch the first game of a three-game series with the White Sox in town and pick up this summer giveaway. Call 972-RANGERS or visit TexasRangers.com to get your tickets. Now the left-hander Tommy Lane on now. 
The liner to Shields, the runner at first, will draw a throw from Lane. Shinsu Chu at the plate is one for two today. Numbers for Tommy Lane. 18th appearance of the year, a 231 league average against him. He's going to try to keep the line off close to first. The Shields already has a stolen base here this afternoon. It's his 12th of the year. 12th in 13 attempts, which is the best success rate of anybody with over 10 stolen base attempts. Fastball to Chew for strike one. Lane also worked on uh, Friday night. Worked uh, just a third of an inning in that ball game. <laughs> he had him picked off, but he just lobbed it over there. Didn't know he had him picked off. I'm not really sure how Delano did that because he had a good three-step jump. Yeah. Hey, watch, watch the pitcher. Just kind of yep. <laughs> pitcher just lobs it over there. But he did it because he's a little quicker than the rest of us. Yeah, those steps come faster than <laughs> ours. <laughs> In the dirt, Swihart able to keep the ball near home plate. One ball, one strike. Delano, boy, he is fun to watch. Love watching him uh, run, and even when he doesn't run, like on that play at first. Plus, where Napoli caught that ball, he was way in front of the base. I don't know if he could have reached around and tagged him anyway. Lane holding this time. And the ball gets by Swihart. Go down to second, goes to Shield. Well, he gets working himself. hard to hold him, but couldn't do it anyway. Gets himself in a scoring position. He tried to catch that ball without making the palm of his glove point upward. It kind of slapped into the ground. Looked like a fairly catchable ball. It's going to go as a wild pitch, but yeah. Swihart will watch that and say, I should have caught that ball. And Chu. It's a soft grounder out to Pedroia. That'll do it. Well, the Rangers get a hit, but strand a runner. We have finished six here at Globe Life Park. It remains the Red Sox three and the Rangers two. happened uh, in the fifth inning. Adrian Beltre going into second base to try and break up that double play and he jammed his left thumb. Had to leave the ball game and we have not gotten final word uh, on the outcome of that. Meantime, Xander Bogarts with that base hit in the sixth inning put the Red Sox ahead. Three to two as we go to the seventh inning and John Edwards back to the mound for the Rangers. 
Edwards came on to get the final out of the sixth. Got Castillo to uh, pop out. Now facing the top of the order, Dustin Pedroia. Ahead of the count very quickly. No balls, two strikes. Pedroia 0 for 3 today. Fly ball, he reached on an error. That was in the second inning and uh, struck out in the fifth. Red Sox, three runs on nine hits this afternoon. Nine hits have all been singles. That double-barreled action in the Ranger bullpen. Sam Freeman, the left-hander. Keone Kella from the right side. One and two now. Keller High School graduate John Edwards to the wind. Trying to get Pedroia in there again and missed. It's two balls, two strikes. Big, tall right-hander. Hard throwing John Edwards. Ball down the right side will twist back into the seats. Still two balls, two strikes. A good crowd on hand out here this afternoon. It's been a good series. Looks to be uh, close to the mid-30s. Maybe 33, 34,000. At 42,000 plus last night. And Pedroia again spoiling a pretty good Edwards pitch. He's had a lot of pitches well inside the strike zone to hit. Edwards trying to drop that breaking ball in and left it a little bit high on inside. So it's a full count to Pedroia. Leading off the seventh inning. He'll be followed by Mookie Betts, the center fielder. Payoff pitch. In the air to right field. Chu retreating has room. One gone. Good job by John. Pounded that strike zone with a lot of good quality pitches to get Pedroia. Leadoff hitter in the seventh inning. And Pedroia almost a 400 hitter in the 10 games prior to this one. But 0 for 4 this, 0 for 4 in this one. No one gone. Here's Mookie Betts who has a single and three trips. One ball, no strikes. Betts. And a base hit up the middle his first time up. Came around to score the first run of the ball game. 248 the average. Rangers finish up here with the Red Sox hoping to uh, win their first home series of the year. They lead this series two games to one. Here's a strike. Rangers 0 5 and 2 on home series so far. Matter of fact, the last two games, they win on Friday and last night. First time this year they've won back to back games at home. That's how uh, poorly things have gotten off to the start of 2015 at home. Obviously, Rangers uh, very good on the road. The 3 1 pitch. Ball four. You know, Betts draws the one out walk, and he has very good speed on the base pass now. And David Ortiz coming up. And with Ortiz making his way to the plate, that brings uh, Jeff Bannister out of the Ranger dugout. He had the left hander Sam Freeman up there, and that's who he is going to want to call in. So he wants Freeman to come in to face David Ortiz, one on and one out. Seventh inning, a 3-2 Red Sox lead. Sam Freeman coming in. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
leads the United States women's national team in search of their third World Cup championship against the best teams in the world. The only place you can see the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup is on Fox and Fox Sports 1 beginning June 6th. Well, Sam Freeman, the 27-year-old left-hander from Carrollton. And Hebron High School out there now for his ninth appearance of the year. Freeman with that 7-11 lucky earned run average. Worked here in last night's game. One inning of shutout baseball. Now has to face David Ortiz with Mookie Betts at first. Ortiz is one for three today. Good breaking ball from Freeman for strike one. Now, when Sam locates his pitches, he's got stuff to get big league hitters out. There's no doubt about that. His fastball can reach the mid 90s. You can see the kind of breaking ball that he's got that he started Ortiz out with. Quality stuff. Just a matter of consistently putting it together where he wants to throw it. And when he does that, he is tough. Like he threw him a changeup. Got the foul ball. No balls, two strikes. Now, bets at first. Again, the Red Sox don't run a lot. Only 16 stolen bases, but Betts has seven of them. He's uh, seven out of nine. And with them ahead by a run, John Farrell might very well give him the green light now that the count has gotten to 0 and 2 on David Ortiz. Rangers in that extreme overshift with Ortiz up there. Adam Rosales, the third baseman, playing a normal shortstop spot. Elvis and Hanser Alberto and, of course, Mitch Moreland all bunched up on that right side. Just off the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. David Ortiz, and it looks like the last few at bats, he's been swinging the bat better than what the reports had been on him earlier. And he's very capable of hitting the ball to left and left center field against any left hander. Betts inching off the bag at first. He's on the move, and they've got him picked off. The throw is not in time. Got in under the tag. Oh, he just went on the first move, and it just took the Rangers too long to get the ball to second base. Didn't have that much time. Betts is quick. He's gone. Rangers really didn't do anything wrong. They no. just had to, they had to do it quicker and more accurately. And it's tough to throw the ball down toward the bag with a runner standing up. You're afraid you're going to hit him right in the back. That was just a little too quick on that play. And Jeff Bannister out of the dugout. They're going to challenge that call at second base. The safe call. Well, it wasn't too Todd quick. Tishner. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we will. Folks back in New York at the replay command center will have an opportunity to look at all the different views. And see if there is clear and convincing evidence that that call should be overturned. That's what the Rangers are hoping for. The replay crew for the Rangers, Joey Probinski, looking at things upstairs. And he relays it down to the bench coach, Steve Bouchel. And then to Jeff Bannister. Pretty tough to tell from that angle. Now, here's the, here's the angle. Hard to see where his left hand was. You can see his right hand from that angle. Hard to see if his left hand had gotten to the bag when before that slap that tag was slapped on. Here's the shot you'd be able to see. Yeah, it, it's very very close, uh, but I, it wouldn't appear there'd be enough there to overturn it. No, it didn't look like it to me. Unless his hand came off the bag somewhere. No way Elvis could get the glove down quickly enough. Yeah. yeah it looks like that one's 
probably going to stand, I would think. And Tim Welke, the crew chief, and, and Todd Tishner, the uh, second base umpire who made the call over there with the headsets on. There's one more angle. And it looks like that hand was on the bag, and he is safe. The uh, call comes back from New York. Major challenge is turned down. The call stands. So uh, again, not uh, not clear and convincing evidence to say it was the correct call, but not clear and convincing evidence to overturn it either. So the call stands as called on the field. So it goes down as a stolen base for Betts, his eighth in ten attempts. One and two, the count to Ortiz. A little number right down the first baseline. It's a fair ball. And jumping out on it is Corporan. They get Ortiz at first. Betts moves to third, but he's there with two outs now. That's the ball that just refused to go foul. No, 2 3 on the put out. Well, generally, those balls do go foul because they have a little spin on them. That one got to the chalk and just stopped right in the middle of it. So two outs, and with uh, the right-handed hitting, Hanley Ramirez coming up. Jeff Bannister again out to the mound. He wants the, the right-hander, Keone Keller, to make his way in from the bullpen and take on Hanley Ramirez. So another pitching change underway. Again, we will take a timeout. We're back right after this. Third base, Keone Kella has been asked to come out of the Ranger bullpen and face Hanley Ramirez. Kella with his 24 appearances, 4 and 1, league hitting just 256 against him. And facing a guy in Hanley Ramirez who is 2 for 3 today. 0 and 1 the count. That 96 mile an hour heat immediately. Ramirez couldn't catch up with it. Now, Keone started out well this year as a rookie, and it just seems like after two months, he's more confident and has just gotten better and better as the games have gone on. Like that. Oh, strike two, yeah. 96 96. Ramirez didn't like it, and that's a strike all the way. Probably didn't see it. He might have heard the echo. My echo pitch track. Heard the buzz as it went by him. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing into the count. Kella worked here on Thursday night against the Red Sox. Ramirez to right, but that is right at Shinsu Chu. Well, Kella gets Ramirez on a line drive. That will do it. The uh, Red Sox strander runner. Stretch time at the ballpark. 3 2 Boston. That must join Chuck Morgan as he introduces God Bless America. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. 
Will you please rise as we remember the servicemen and women who are serving our country at home and around the world. Performing God Bless America today is Norris Perry. God bless America. And that I love stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with fall. Sunday, June 14th, the Twins are in town to get an Elvis Andrews stolen base garden gnome. That's courtesy of Coca-Cola. The first 15,000 fans coming into Globe Life Park that day. Get the gnome. Get your tickets at TexasRangers.com or you can call 972-RANGERS. Tommy Lane back to work here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Prince Fielder starting things off. Adam Rosales to follow and then Mitch Moreland. Red Sox on top by a run. They've out hit the Rangers nine to seven this afternoon. Prince Fielder has one of those seven Ranger hits. That was the first inning single. Trying to tie it with one swing of the bat. Nothing into the count. Prince with 10 home runs, 38 driven in as we come to the close of the month of May. Well, he has had some kind of month to talk about. Got him swinging here. Lane with a nasty breaking ball. One gone. Lane has that kind of funky delivery that I'm sure is a little difficult for a lefty. Got a solid fastball at 91 miles an hour, and he's got the kind of breaking ball that gives left-hand hitters fits. Well, Adam Rosales now with his first at bat of the afternoon since taking over for Adrian Beltre. Rosales had a career high tying four base hits in last night's game. Now, our Coors Light cold hard fact for you. 
four hits last night against the Rangers. Two hits in the previous 19 at bats over eight home games this season. So Adam Rosales uh, getting that done. Brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Coors Light cold hard fact. And he skies one to shallow the field. Hanley Ramirez shading his eyes with the glove. That is out number two. Well, before Mitch Moreland steps in, let's send it over to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. All right, Dana, thank you. Mitch Moreland taking inside for ball one. 0 for 3 today. is grounded out twice and struck out. Mitch now at 292 for the season. And five home runs, 18 driven in. Chops this one on the right side. Pedroia. On to Napoli, and Tommy Lane works a 1 2 3 seventh. He's retired all four Rangers that he's been asked to face. We're going to the eighth inning and remains Boston 3, Texas 2. Matt Stokes, he's from Milwaukee, but right now he is cycling to all 30 baseball parks around the country. Why, Matt? Yeah, um, so it's actually to raise money for Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and youth mentoring programs. Uh, so I started back in Seattle on opening day, and I've cycled 4,000 miles so far, and I've got about uh, 7,500 more miles to ride my bike. Well, here's the bag. Congratulations. And uh, any bad weather along the way? Yeah, I've, I've had a few tornadoes. Um, few rain showers and a foot of snow in the Rockies, so I've definitely been traveling through some tough weather. And real quick, where are you going to end? What ballpark? Yeah, I'll finish in Miller, at Miller Park in Milwaukee with my uh, hometown Milwaukee Brewers um, on October 3rd. So it'll take the entire season, but i got a long way to go yet. All right, best of luck, Matt. All right, happy cycling. There you go. Buzz? All right, Doxy, thank you. A lot of, that's a lot of bicycling. Goodness. Mike Napoli starting off the eighth inning. Pull the Red Sox. Napoli, Sandoval, and Bogarts to uh, face Keone Kella. Napoli shoots one just foul outside the bag at third. Count of one ball and two strikes. Napoli 0 for 3 today. We just got word on uh, Adrian Beltre, and it's, it's not real good. Adrian has a sprained thumb and uh, a lacerated thumb that took four stitches to close. And Right now, it's said that he's going to miss a minimum of two weeks. So Adrian, who had played in the last 190 Ranger games consecutively, going to have to 
have that streak come to an end. And that is not good news for the Rangers. Two balls and two strikes to Napoli. Breaking ball, and that hung just a bit high. So the count is full. Again, Adrian Beltre in the fifth inning on first base, trying to break up the double play. Jammed that thumb on the bag as he went by it. Sliding there and reaching back with the thumb, and he knew right there there was something not very good going on. Napoli down swing, and Eoni Kell went upstairs. One gone. He only has just a young kid. Big leagues for the first time. He's got a great idea of what he's doing. Got the good fastball. We've seen a good changeup, good breaking ball. Seems to know when to throw them all, too. Well, the first strikeout for Kellett. One gone. Pablo Sandoval. Takes a strike at the knees. That's his changeup at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> They still swing, even though it's 87 to 90 miles an hour, it's still effective. They yeah. still swing at it. They're out in front of it, fooled by it. One ball, one strike. Sandoval won for three today and a second inning single. Other than that, he has grounded out and popped out. A ball and two strikes. Sandoval with the average of 253 as he faces Keone Kella. Hands are Alberto. Sidearm flip to first. There are two gone. Next will be Xander Bogarts. First off, Xander Bogarts. Bogarts. Had the RBI single in the sixth inning. And scored the go-ahead run. Put uh, the Red Sox on top three to two. Bogarts two for three today. That season average now up to 270. And his RBI total at 17. Foul back and out of play. The single that Bogarts had in the fourth inning. Snapped an 0 for 16 streak. And he had been really spiraling out of control and well, he's gotten base hits in his last two at bats. Make that his last three at bats. A short stroke of his and well, he just shot it right back up the middle. Two out single, one on for Blake Swihart. And the Red Sox now in double figures with 10 base hits, all of them singles today. Swihart has one of those. He singled his last time up. And the majority of those singles have been relatively softly hit bloopers and grounders. Nothing and one. The Rangers really haven't helped out the uh, Red Sox with a lot of walks or anything. Just one walk issued by Ranger pitching. One and one to Swihart. Now two and one. Now Swihart. With the single his last time up, extends his hitting streak. It's now up to eight straight ball games. Kellis, 2 1 pitch. Pulled sharply, but over to Alberto at second. That'll do it. Another two out single, no damage done. One man left. Bottom of the eighth come up. Rangers come to bat, trailing the Red Sox 3 to 2.
to the bottom of the eighth with the Red Sox on top by a score of three to two. The team with a day off tomorrow here in town. That is before the Chicago White Sox come to town for a three-game series as we continue this home stand. The AL Rookie of the Year from last season, Jose Abreu, will be on tap. And Josh Hamilton looking to continue his hot swinging against the Sox. A 340 average career for Josh after a day off today. Things get going at 7 o'clock here on Fox Sports Southwest. As always, this info brought to you by AT&T Uverse. Guys. All right, and thank you. Well, the uh, Rangers now come to bat in the bottom of the eighth. They'll face Junichi Tozawa, the setup man for the Boston Red Sox. And he has been a good one. Yeah, he's one of the better setup guys. Good, good eighth inning guy. He hasn't had a chance to be a closer yet, but he gets the job done in the seventh and eighth innings. Got a mid-90s fastball. He's given up three home runs this year, though. Elvis going to start things for the Rangers here in the eighth. And first ball swinging. Lifts one to right field. Castillo has it for out number one. Tozawa throws one pitch, gets one out. Now Leonis Martin will come up. Tozawa, 28-year-old, he'll be 29 in about a week. From Yokohama in Japan. Good fastball, and as Tom told you in the mid 90s, also that split fingered fastball that really is a devastating pitch when he gets it going. A little bit high with the heat. One ball, no strikes. Leonis 0 for 3 today. He's lined out, grounded out, and struck out. One and one. Pablo Sandoval, the uh, third baseman for the Red Sox, in a couple of steps in front of the cut of the grass at third. Everybody else in the Red Sox infield. Back and uh, a step or so around to the right side. Here's that splitter. One and two. Good look at the... Uh, Defensive alignment for the Red Sox outfield shading Leonis uh, the opposite way. They shade him to hit the ball the other way against Tozawa. The one two is coming. Two balls and two strikes. Tozawa joined the uh, Red Sox 2009. Had Tommy John surgery. Missed the uh, 2010 season. Anyway, since then, he has been on a pretty good roll with the Red Sox. That pitch is low. It's three and two. Good pitch to lay off of. That's a, that's a splitter. Just barely out of the strike zone. The hitter looks a lot like his fastball, so it's tough to lay off it. Drops right at the end. Now the payoff pitch is coming to Martin. And try it again. Because all in each of the last two years, 2013, 2014, has had 71 appearances for Boston. Average 65 innings in those 71 appearances. A real shutdown guy in the eighth inning. Rangers trying to get to him here. They're trailing three to two. Center field bets. Retreats. Makes the catch. Two gone. And Carlos Corcoran will come out. Tom Tony, the Rangers playing with a three-man bench today. We got Josh Hamilton from the left side on the bench, Robinson Torinos. And that's it. Adam Rosales has already come into the game to take over for the injured Adrian Beltre. Corporant, one for three this afternoon.
Takes strike one. Now Carlos at 179 with his season average. Tozawa sets for the 0 1 pitch. Back to the plate comes the right hand. Pulled hard down the line, but uh, foul. One ball, two strikes. The Rangers, one of this uh, nice Sunday afternoon crowd, 32,848 on hand here today. Rangers trying to come back and uh, give them something to cheer about. A yeah, great way to finish off the month of May. One two pitch. Call strike three. Splitter came back in the front door and that'll do it. Kazawa sends the Rangers down in order. We're moving on to the ninth inning at Globe Wide Park. The Red Sox three and the Rangers two. We head into the ninth inning. Dana Larson here reminding you we'll have the post-game show coming up right after the game. Join me and Mark McLemore for his expert analysis. And we'll also have reaction from the clubhouse and the manager, plus much more on Adrian Beltre's injury and what the Rangers will do to fill his shoes in the meantime. That's all coming up right after the game. We will see you then. But for now, we'll get it back over to Buzz and Tom, guys. All right, Dana, thank you very much. Well, we head to the uh, ninth inning, and Ross Ollendorf, the 32-year-old Texan, has come out of the bullpen to take over. Ollendorf with his uh, seventh appearance of the year with the uh, Rangers. The last time we saw him was on Friday night. Worked an inning in that uh, Ranger victory. Now on here to face Rusne Castillo, and he throws strike one. Castillo... One for three today at an infield single in the second. And he has his second base hit as he pulls one through the hole on the left side. Castillo took the fastball, then had a breaking ball down around the knees and hit it pretty well in the left field. Looks like a little bit of a free swinger. A one on, nobody out. Back to the top of the Red Sox order for Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia 0 for 4 today. And that long batting streak that he's got, the 10 game hitting streak that he brought into play today. 
Could be on the line with this at bat. Sox with the 11 base hits. They have all been singles this afternoon. Pedroia did reach base. That was back in the second on the error. Pedroia checking down at third with Ryan Butterfield, the third base coach. See if anything uh, might be in the works here. And Olador fires strike one. John Farrell relaying signs through Butterfield to Pedroia and to Castillo at first. Ollendorf peering in for the sign. And Pedroia shoots it out of play. Pedroia taking time getting back in. Ollendorf, you remember. Started the uh, season on the disabled list. He had a groin strain right at the end of uh, spring training that prevented him from being in the competition for one of the spots on the staff to open up the season. There goes Castillo, and the pitch is poked out of play. Castillo has no idea where the ball is. Some base runners, as they're going, will take a peek to see where the ball is. Others, if it's not a hit and run, will just sprint to second base in a straight line without looking. And those are the kind of guys that you deep slide into second on a ball in the gap yeah. so they can't score. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nolendorf making Castillo dive back. Once Ross got uh, got back healthy again, he had uh, nine appearances in a Triple A. Went two and one with a 4.35. All in relief. Misses outside here, and the count goes to one and two. Echo pitch tracker. Giving you an idea of where Ross is trying to work to Pedroia. Again, Castillo on the move. He picked the right pitch. Got a breaking ball in the dirt. And off the bag of Castillo at second base. And now, the second base umpire, Todd Tischer had called him out. They went over to take a look at it, apparently, and said, no, he's still on the bag. Well, we couldn't tell from here. It was a nice slide, a hook slide. But I don't know if he kept his foot on the bag or not. Seems like if he called him out for not having his foot on the bag, by the time we go back and look, he probably put it on the bag. Let's see. That's definitely off the bag right there. Well, you said he said pushed him off the bag. Oh, okay. I thought he was saying his foot That's was off the bag. That's what I thought, too. Well, I, don't I don't know if he, he did. Pushed, I don't, I don't think he, think he did. He was, a little, he was a little bit off balance, but I don't think he did push him off. Well, and Jeff Bannister not getting his money's worth. He's been tossed, and rightfully so. I, you know, there's an argument to be had there. And there was no no evidence from any angle that uh, he was pushed off the bag. Well, Todd Tischer had heard enough, though, and he uh, ran him out. Wow, he, if anything, he slowed him down. Yeah. Definitely didn't push him off the bag. And now they're going to have a 
an umpire's conference. And see if the, if the umpires want to get together and review the play. And uh, the answer is probably no, to be quite honest. just reached down off balance to make the tag. And Steve Bouchelle, the uh, bench coach, and now the acting manager out there to get clarification. The Rangers didn't have a challenge, right? They used, right. They used the challenge and failed. They didn't have a challenge for that play. A two and two, the count to Pedroia. Up the middle. Elvis has it near the bag. He will throw out Pedroia on to third. Goes Castillo. So a big play. The stolen base makes a huge difference right away. And then instead of that being a potential double play, it turns into a runner at third now with just one out. And Mookie Betts coming up. Now. Ross Ollendorf working to bets. The infield will pull all the way in. Need to cut down the run at the plate if they possibly can. Betts one for three with a walk today. And that first pitch is low for ball one. All four infielders at the cut of the grass. They have Moreland at first well off the line. So he's trying to cut that hole down. Good breaking ball from Ollendorf. One and one. Get a good look at the Ranger defense. Kind of bunching toward the middle a bit. Another breaking ball and couldn't get Betts to offer at it. Two balls and a strike. Runners in scoring position. The Red Sox have had trouble all year long. It's 223. Today they're three for 12. And you saw there's Nate Castillo down there at third. Ollendorf with a 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two two. Ninety-two percent of the time, Betts has gotten that runner home from third. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Not that time. That'll run that... Uh, Percentage down just a bit. A big strikeout for Ollendorf. Bet's gone. Now there are two outs, and David Ortiz coming out. They buried the breaking ball and got Betts to swing at it. According to Mike Everett, the first base umpire. A good job by Ross. Boy, man on third base, one run game. That's an out you want to get without letting that run get in. And he took it himself, got the strikeout. And they're going to intentionally walk David Ortiz. And it sets up a confrontation that didn't work out too well here on Friday night. That would be uh, Ross Ollendorf and Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez took Ollendorf deep. Well, a little uh, redemption coming for Ross. It's Hanley Ramirez. Fourth wide one is issued. And uh, Big Poppy will go down to first. And our runners at the corners, two outs. And Mike Maddox is going to head out to the mound. A little chat with uh, his battery, Ross Ollendorf and Carlos Corporan, along with the rest of the infield. And Mitch out asking the uh, Ranger dugout. About positioning, whether you want to hold uh, David Ortiz on first, probably not. Mike making sure, as he always does when he goes out there, there's a good plan in place. Now it's just a matter of executing that plan.
So Cotter's concluded. Everybody back to their positions. Hanley Ramirez stepping to the plate. Two for four this afternoon. Ramirez has had a pair of singles, an RBI. He has scored a run. He has a very big run down at third base in the person of Bruce Ney Castillo. David Ortiz at first, and the first pitch of the at bat. <laughs> Think he was taken on that one? He looked so. like a statue. <laughs> he didn't move. He didn't move anything. No. Uh -uh. He was taken all the way. Saw the numbers in this matchup: three for eight. And Ramirez taken again. Two balls, no strikes. Folks sitting in front of their TV saying, well, if, you, if he's taken, why do you throw one right down the middle? <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't know he's taken. You don't know ahead of time. <laughs> That's, That's cute off the back. end of the bat. That may come back fair. No. Nope. <laughs> Mitch was trying to let it. And he just ran out of time and out of room. Two and one. Couldn't get the right little chunk of dirt down there to hit it and kick it back fair, even with all that spin on it. But Castillo back to third, Ortiz back to first, and the Ramirez back to the plate. Two outs, a 2 1 count on it. Popped him up. It's Moreland coming down the line from first base. Makes the catch, and Ollendorf able to skirt a difficult issue. No runs, one hit, two left. Rangers will come to bat in the bottom of the ninth, trailing three to two with Alberto, the Shields, and Chu do up. On Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By AT&T, UVerse TV. UVerse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by your Texas Ford dealers. The Ford Memorial Day EcoBoost sales event is here. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. In the bottom of the ninth inning. The closer for the Boston Red Sox, former Ranger Koji Uehara. On now to see if he can slam the door. The Rangers try to put a foot in it and keep that wide open. And get it back to the top of the order to start things. Brock Holt has entered the ball game. He is playing in left field now in place of Hanley Ramirez. Hanser Alberto leading things off. Uehara misses high for ball one. Alberto, two hits in the ball game today. He is two for three. Putting at a cool 400. 
Ball two is high. Well, here's where you can take a shot at it. Look for a fastball. If you get one, his fastball is only 88 miles an hour. The threat is you get a splitter, but I don't think you get one here. And he's probably not going to walk anybody. Two one pitch. Bob Sandoval has it go off his glove. And Alberto is aboard as the tying run with nobody out. We've seen a number of balls like that today. Three of them have kind of handcuffed Ranger infielders, those tricky hops. And you can almost see that coming on Sandoval. He waited for the hop. It's going to take a little bit of a tricky hop right here on him. A little closer to him than he wanted it to be. He's watching it all the way. Just hits off the thumb of his glove for an error. That's a great way to start the inning. Well, the third error committed this afternoon by the Red Sox. That's the second one committed by Sandoval. Well, the Rangers have the tying run aboard. Nobody out. Top of the order now. Delano to Shields. 0 for 3 this afternoon. Sandoval creeping down the line from third to Shields takes a strike. Nothing in one. Well, you couldn't think of a better guy, though, if you're going to sacrifice in this spot. He could turn a sacrifice into a base hit. He sure can. Certainly can. You see Sandoval starting about 70 feet from home plate, and he will creep down even further. The bunt is down. It's a good one. Sandoval, quick throw to first. Pedroia covering. They get the Shields. But in the scoring position with one out, his hands are Alberto. Shin Su Chu coming to the plate. Yeah, That's good hitters coming up with that tying run at second base. And you play for a tie here because you look at the Red Sox bullpen. They've used their setup man, they've used their closer. And if you can tie the game right here, you feel like you've got a little bit of an advantage on them with your bullpen. Rangers have a deeper bullpen today. They haven't used their closer. But playing for a tie here makes a lot of sense. Shin Tzu Chu, one for three with a walk this afternoon. He has scored a run. 237 average for Chu. And a little tapper. Lahara will underhand to Napoli at first. That is out number two. Chu got the splitter on the first pitch and miss hit it. Well, Alberto now down at third. And that will come into play if there happens to be one of those splitters in the dirt. The Prince Fielder and the Rangers uh, are going to count on. And I don't know that he's going to get a chance to swing the bat. No, you've got to be crazy if you pitch to him right here, even if you are putting a winning run on base. John Farrell said, no, we're not going to go that route. We want the intentional walk. Take the bat out of Fielder's hands, and what you're going to have now, instead of Adam Rosales, you have Josh Hamilton grabbing a bat and coming into the on-deck circle, and the crowd just noticed it. So Hamilton with the bat in the on-deck circle is Prince Fielder watching the intentional walk delivered by Koji O'Hara. And there is the fourth one. And here we go. It's been a long game, but if you stayed till the end of it, you got an exciting finish. Tying in at third, Josh Hamilton, pinch hitter. Plate or a high splitter that Josh waits on. Hamilton is three for 12 in his career against Koji Lahara. He's got the tying run at third, the winning run at first, two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. Josh hitting at 238. Takes outside for ball one. He is five for 21. 
with two home runs and three driven in. Thirty-two thousand plus, most of them on their feet. One and one. Josh answered that uh, standing ovation on Thursday night in his first at bat, doubling on the first pitch that he saw. Two home runs on Friday night. Lines one to left center field. That is up the alley and two to all. Alberto scores. Here comes Fielder around third. The throw not in time. The Rangers and Josh Hamilton walk it off. Four to three. for the pitch that you wanted to get. It was either a fastball out over the plate or a high splitter. The splitter before that pitch was down and Josh missed it. That one was up and he waited on it and drove it into the gap. The walking Prince Fielder was the right play, but the pitch that Uahara made to Josh was not the right pitch, not the right location. 